Hello, hello, my lovely students. Welcome back after the midterm. Um, grades on the first part were really great. I have not graded the second part yet. I'm going to start doing that later tonight slash tomorrow, but it should go pretty quickly since I'm only grading three problems, basically. All right, so what we are doing this week is we are going to look at completing the square. Now, how teachers use this can be a little weird, but learning how to do this, this skill does come in handy, especially with the circle section coming up. So I do want you to at least pay attention to it, get kind of familiar with it. But as far as solving quadratics, yeah, you're usually going to use the quadratic formula. It, it, doing it, the completing the square way, me. All right. So first thing here over on the side, this uh, little box I pulled from Alex. So when you're solving one of these with completing the square, it actually asks for two things. One of them is in the squared format before you would square root both sides. And then it has a choice of, do you want it with the plus or with the minus? So pay attention to that. It means the number you put in the box uh, here is going to be positive. You won't put a sign on that number because you're going to pick the sign with the plus or the minus. And then you'll put in the solution and they usually want the solution as two separate answers. So you'll have to do, like if you get something that looks like a quadratic formula answer, you're gonna have to do one answer with the plus and then a comma and then one answer with the minus if it doesn't work out to pretty numbers. All right. So completing the square, we kind of previewed this a little, as long as A is one, we look at our B number and we're gonna focus in on that. So my square number here, let me rewrite it again. Oh boy, I zoomed in. I'm gonna put a blank and the same blank. So I want to figure out one number I put here that's going to complete this so that I can turn this into one thing squared. So if you remember from last week, hopefully, the interaction between this number in the squared and these two up here is we take the six divided by two and it's positive six, so it's positive three. And then the number that we would add to both sides up here is three squared. And because you're squaring it, you always add it because even if it was minus three, it'd be minus three in parentheses squared. So you always add this number. All right, so this thing factors down to X plus three, whole thing squared. And this other side, three squared is nine, 16 plus nine is the lovely 25. So this would be your first answer. You're gonna click the one with the plus, put in three and put in 25 on the other side. Now we finish solving by applying the square root property. Since we are writing the radical, we put the plus or minus. I say this because later on we're gonna solve radical equations where if we don't write the square root in, we're not applying it, we don't do plus or minus. So just trying to give you guys a kind of preview and think about when do we put it, when do we not, because there are situations for either. So now we have x plus three equals plus or minus five. And then I'm gonna minus three from both sides, just because later on that five won't be a whole number. So this is what the answer would tentatively look like but we can actually calculate negative three plus five and negative three minus five. So negative three plus five, five minus three is two. And then negative three minus five gets more negative, so it is negative eight. Now you guys are also looking at these as functions and looking at the graphs of some of them. So if I move the 16 back over and then instead of the zero that would be here, I put a Y, then where that graph crosses the x-axis, which is when y would be zero, it is at the points x equals two and x equals negative eight, so two zero, negative eight zero. 
So that's one of the ways to see where these numbers are going to show up in the graphs. And that is often how we use graphs, is we craft an equation such that the intercepts are going to be our points of interest. And that's because we have a lot of methods for finding intercepts. But for these, it's not a graph yet, so it's not an ordered pair, it's just the two numbers. Don't put parentheses, just two comma negative eight, or you could write negative eight comma two. The order doesn't matter on these. All right, same song, second verse. A little bit louder, a little bit worse. All right. So again, I'm gonna write it with some space in there. X squared, now it's a negative eight in this case. Leave a blank equals one, leave a blank. Just go ahead and fill in the pluses. All right. So now I know this is gonna be X, some number squared equals, and then we'll figure out what that side is. So remember here, we divide by two. And then here, I'm gonna put SQ for square. So negative eight divided by two is negative four. Negative four squared, we know is positive 16. So we have x minus four whole thing squared equals 17. That'd be one of the answers on Alex. And now we are going to apply the square root and we put the plus or minus. 17 is an ugly number for square rooting. So we are gonna get an answer that looks more like the result from the quadratic formula. In fact, it is prime. So we don't even have to worry about reducing it because there's not a four I can divide out of the 17 to pull a number outside. All right, last step, we add the four, add the four in front. We do that so it doesn't look like it's hanging at the end and you wonder, is that under the square root? Did the person forget to write the bar all the way? So that's why we put these numbers in front. So I'm just gonna leave it as four plus or minus the square root of 17. On Alex, you would probably have to separate it. Four plus the square root of 17, four minus the square root of 17. You put a comma in between. Make sure the comma is not under the square root. Like sometimes you'll notice, oh, I'm still under the square root and you back up, but you forget to take the comma out and then go outside. So fair warning, it's one of the most common mistakes that's not mathematical. All right. So now things are getting a little more interesting. We have an A number. Now the whole completing the square process, divide by two and square it is dependent on the A number, the number in front of the squared term being one. So if it is not one in your starting problem, then you make it one. And the way you make it one is by dividing by the number. So in this case, it is a three. So we're gonna divide everything by three. And since this is an equation, as long as I do the same thing to both sides, I'm all good. Everybody gets divided by three. So now it is a y squared minus four y minus four equals zero. All right, now to do completing the square, we gotta move the constant term over. So we're gonna add four. Still gonna leave the blank though. So it's y squared minus four y, leave a blank equals now four, leave a blank. All right, now it's y instead of x, meh. I think on Alex, they'll probably stick with x just cause they don't wanna reprogram the answers. So half of negative four is negative two. Negative two squared will be four. So I'm actually gonna erase that and put an eight there. So there's our in-between answer. Now we finish it out by square rooting. Sneak in the plus or minus, so y minus two. And eight actually does simplify. 
So eight is four times two, and you can think the square root of four is two, and then you have a two left over, or I just break everything down to their smallest numbers. And then I have a pair of twos. So that is gonna come outside the radical as a single two, and then the leftovers will be inside. So two square root of two. And now when we add the two, that is gonna go in front and we get a very two heavy answer. Y equals now two plus or minus two square roots of two. Yay. So you do have to check that the answers are going to reduce. If you have a calculator that does that, cool. Um, you still have to do that same check when you do use the quadratic formula. So you got to get used to checking square roots to be reduced. We don't often do roots higher than a square root. Like we'll talk about graphing them and using them, but we don't often talk about simplifying them to look pretty because we have calculators. All right, now it gets a little odd. Yeah, I know I have dad level jokes. Well, first things first, I need the constant term on the other side. It's in my way. So I'm gonna add it over. Now it's gonna get a little weirder because this means we're gonna get fractions. I know, this is why you have a calculator. So we have t squared plus t plus ugly blank equals seven plus ugly blank. So the number here, the invisible number, the number we can always multiply by is a one. The process still works. So before I was doing divide by two, I still do divide by two, but in this case, one doesn't divide nicely. So we're gonna write one half and the one was positive. So the one half will be positive. And then what we're gonna add over there is a one half squared. And because I want to see it here on the left, I must also add it on the right. One half squared is one fourth. So I have seven plus one fourth. Now, from here to the end of math, we don't like looking at mixed numerals because I can't square root that nicely. Like, I can't do much with it. So we're going to convert this back to an improper. So we're going to do the 7 times 4 is 28 plus 1 is 29. So this is 29 fourths. Now, you can also just punch that on the calculator and on the TIs. You hit the math button, and the very first thing is this arrow thing and then it says frac and if the thing that you just were working on is writable as a fraction it will give you the fraction assuming the um, numerator and denominator are not too big and by too big i mean like over ten thousand. so for our purposes it will always give you the fraction if it's fractionable something like the square root of two over two while it's a fraction it's not rational so the frac command won't handle that. Maybe it does on the really new fancy ones, but eh, I doubt it. So you just type seven plus one divided by four. It'll do the operation order correctly. Then math enter enter. And you can do it after you hit enter to get the decimal because it'd be 7.25. Or you could do it before and then it'll display 29 over four for you. So this is by far the most useful tool, at least that I've used on the TI, is I don't want to think about my fractions. What is it? All right. So we got to the intermediary point with Alex, and it will probably want the fraction, not the decimal. So if you type the decimal, it'll probably say, we want a fraction. Alex is actually usually pretty nice about telling you that when you do the wrong format. So just FYI. I'm going to put a plus or minus in there. So now on this side, it is just T plus one half. So that one half will get moved over in a sec. And now the square root of a fraction, 
the square root is like an exponent. Oh, it is an exponent. It's actually a fractional exponent, one half. And it's going to split between the top and the bottom. We can break the square root across uh, multiplication and division. Now here, the plus or minus only stays on one of them. And we typically put it on the top because the bottom, with the way these problems work, works out to be a nice number. Like it's square rootable. And in fact, it's usually four. Not always, but usually. Before you square root it. All right, so this is going to leave us with plus or minus the square root of 29. And you do want to kind of have that moment of pause. 29, can I break that down? It's not even, not 3, not 4, not 5. It's like 5 times almost 6, though. Not quite 6, so it's not going to, it's prime. So it is going to stay like that. And then on the bottom, it would be the square root of 4. I'll go ahead and write that for now but we would want to write it as over two. Now we just minus that one half over and it's gonna go in front just like it has for the whole numbers, but check this out. So I am not sure if Alex wants you to type it this way where it's two separate fractions. This is mathematically correct. It's not wrong to do so, but what we usually get out of the quadratic formula looks like this, where it's all one fraction because the denominator is the same. So we get, oh, sorry. Now it would be negative one plus or minus the square root of 29 all over two. And hopefully that format looks a little familiar from some of your math classes in the past. So like I said, Alex should take either of these because this is the first one is actually what you tend to get from completing the square. The second one is what you'd get from using the quadratic formula. It should take either, but it may have a preference for this one on complete the square problems and then a preference for this on quadratic formula problems. So just be on the lookout. But again, the error messages on Alex are actually really good. All right. We got two more completing the square problems before we'll pause and the next formula will go to finally the quadratic formula. All right. So again, I did another A not equal to one, but in this case, the number actually divides nicely. Everything's divisible by five here, so yay. So now we just have z squared plus 2z plus 1 equals 0. Alrighty, let's play around with this silliness. I'm going to move the 1 over. And you're going to see why I called it silliness in a second here. Or maybe you see it already, which is awesome. So we have the z squared plus 2z. I'm going to leave the blank equals negative 1. Leave the blank. Now we break it down. So this is going to be z, half of 2 is 1. So z plus 1 squared, and then 1 squared is 1. You might be thinking, Liz, we just had that. We did. I'm doing this, though, because this happens sometimes in complete the square problems. Like on your homework, I'd expect to see at least one of these. And what happens is on the other side, negative 1 plus 1 is 0. So we actually have arrived back at this line up here because what we started with on the left side is actually factorable already. It's already a perfect square. But if you don't recognize that, then you go through the process and you get a 0 on this side. That's what the 0 tells you. But it works just fine. And that is still the way you would write it for that intermediary complete the square format. Now we'll go ahead and square root both sides. And in this case, technically there's a plus or minus, but the square root of zero is zero. And adding zero or subtracting zero is still zero. So z plus one equals zero is all we get. There's no plus or minus here. And then we're just gonna minus that one over. So our 
only answer is z equals negative 1. Now, when you are looking at graphing something like this, when you get one answer instead of two, it's what we call a double root. You would see it show up where the quadratic just touches on the axis and bounces back off. So in this case, we're looking at negative one. That is how this one would graph. The five we had in the original equation would just stretch it really, really high. But either of them, with or without the five, it is still going to be a double root at that point. Later on, we're going to be talking about what I call designer polynomials, where sometimes you're going to have polynomials that do this, and you have to know this bounce off is uh, squared or it could be a fourth power root, like a, but it's an even multiplicity is the word we'll use there. So I'm just trying to like bring in the concepts that are coming up or that you've already seen just to try to tie together some of the stuff we're doing with some of the stuff you're going to see. So there is our classic looking double root, which just means the original polynomial factored already into a square. All right. Now this one is all weird on the left because it's already factored, but we don't want it to do that. Like I can't, it's not equal to zero, so I can't split the sides. So we're going to need to get rid of those parentheses. So we got y squared minus 4y, leave a blank, equals negative 9. So now we're going to start heading towards our factored form. Y, leave a blank squared, and then we'll figure out that number. So in this case, half of negative 4 is going to be a negative 2 plus negative 2 squared is plus 4. But oh, well, look at that. That is still the correct complete the square format. But when we try to continue from this step, check out what happens. Rut row. I can't square root a negative number and get a real answer. So depending on where we are in the course, what we do with this varies. So one of the things is we just stop and we say, there's no real solution. And on your Alex objective work, that's what the answer will probably be. But in college algebra, when we're going to talk about classifying roots, complex roots are totally plausible. In which case that negative, because we could write this as negative one times five, the square root of negative one is always I. So let me go ahead and write what I just said. So the square root of negative 1 is just i times the square root of 5. So this is how it will look when you get a complex root is anytime that number inside is negative, you end up with an i outside and the number inside is no longer negative. Now if 5 was something like the 8 we saw earlier, then we would also have to reduce that. So it might be like 2i square root of 2 in that case. And then the other side, of course, we have y minus 2. And so eventually we will add the 2. And so there is our actual final solution. 2 plus or minus i square roots of 5. You might have to write it 2 plus i square root of 5, 2 minus i square root of 5. Um, but you're going to type in answers like this in your college algebra homework assignments. You're probably not going to see them on the objectives because this is the like break point for our 1311 versus 1315. In 1311, we pretend I doesn't exist and just don't talk about it, which is rather silly because then you get to college algebra and you have to talk about it. And you should have complex number lecture, I believe, this week. 
All right. So that's it for this video. Stay safe, and I will see you in the next one to look at the quadratic formula.